Okay. Assalamualaikum and how are you doing everyone? Uh, I hope everyone is the best condition of health and don't forget to take care and stay safe. And I hope the love you are really happy and grateful for everyone for spending your time to attend today's interview. Uh, first of all, today's webinar series is the topic is about disability inclusion in conjunction with International Days of Persons with Disability 2021 and IUM Disability Grant Awareness Campaign 2021. And we are from professional uh, speech communication students and would like to perform the interview with the interesting topic, which is the inspi uh, inspiring story of Ad Jamila from a mother's perspective. My name is Mohammad Mubarak from Vietnam and student in International Islamic University, Malaysia, and the first moderator for this interview. Assalamualaikum, everyone. Good evening. My name is Kaliska. I'm also from Vietnam. I'm the moderator too for this interview for the topic, the inspiring story of Archimila from a mother perspective. Uh, we will find out two categories in this interview. The first one is uh, Jamila's artwork with the slogan, recognize, recognize me for my ability. And the second one is a mother story of love, care and process. And Alhamdulillah, today is our honorable guest, uh, former lecturer and professional architect, interior designer, Poon Norhashima Nurdin, mother of our Jamila, please welcome. And Assalamualaikum, Poon Shima. Uh, how are you today? Before we uh, we proceed our our interview, can you please tell us a bit about your background? Oh, Assalamualaikum. Um, okay, I am a professional architect, and I uh, also interior designer. I was uh, very active practicing as an architect for the past thirty three years. Uh, now I slow down because I. I'm into uh, managing Art Jamila Gallery. I was a lecturer in Faculty of Architecture for 25 years before, uh, until I retired in 2015. And I was also active with, with the Architects Association of uh, Malaysia and also the Board of Architects uh, as a speaker and also um, examiner of the professional exam before for about 10 years. And now I am an art manager to Art Jamila Gallery. Thank you so much, Architect Nuz uh, Hashima. Uh, we will continue with the first uh, and really important part for today's interview, which is the Jamila's artwork. So we also have conducted a video, a short video for everyone to know more clear, clearly about Sister Art Jamila. Please enjoy. Wan Jamila Wan Shaiful Bahri, also known as Art Jamila, a Malaysian icon, breaking new grounds as she brings her voice to the world through art while creating history to inspire others for the next generation. This video will give an overview of Art Jamila's achievements such as her international awards, national awards, major exhibitions, numerous merits obtained as a featured artist and media coverage. Wan Jamila, known professionally as Art Jamila, is an award-winning Savan artist known worldwide. She embarked into the art industries in 2017 with numerous live painting demonstrations and competitions without the help of any formal art education. At a young age, she had shown immense talents and achieved many accolades. She has created history to inspire others. As a young Malaysian icon, she has participated in numerous exhibitions and made social contributions to the autistic and underprivileged community. Her success was documented in the Encyclopedia British Pedia titled Successful People in Malaysia which was published in October in 2020 by British publishing house based in Britain. Her creation of art is purely from her soul, without the help of any formal art education. She has developed a distinctive personal art style which combines doodling and naive art into her scheme and paints through her memories of events she has experienced or learned about. These memories are manifested through imaginations executed on canvas to create a masterpiece of memories. Art is her language to the world, and it is her poetry. She began her journey in art by drawing her emotions when she was four years old to communicate with the people around her. Then, 
she began portraying her memories into her drawings from eight years old. Today, she paints historical events onto her canvas. Her art is like a manuscript of historical events in the form of visual art. Her strokes can touch the viewer's emotions of joy, tiredness, peace, and sadness. Art is her voice, and it is poetry on canvas that acts as the mirror to her soul. She began her journey in art by drawing her emotions when she was four years old to communicate with the people around her. She used art to show her emotions of sadness, happiness, surprise, and anger. Then, she began portraying her memories of events into her drawings from eight years old. These memories could be her house cleaning activities, bedtime routine, bathing and shower routine, grooming activities, birthday celebrations, travels by air, sweet holiday memories, water sports and beach activities during the holidays, academic activities at home, extracurriculum activities at school, happy moments during class parties, English and math lessons at school, dance lessons before school concerts, the yearly school concerts, and the yearly Madeka celebrations at school. Today, she paints historical events onto her canvas. Her art is like a manuscript of historical events in the form of visual art. Her strokes can touch the viewer's emotions of joy, tiredness, peace, and sadness. She has gained several awards nationally and internationally. Among her international recognitions are, on 2nd December 2019, she was appointed as an impact artist from 2020 to 2022 by Via Talenta Foundation in Switzerland for Sea Pollution Awareness. On 5th May 2020, she won the first place award in an Asian frontliner team contest. On 10th May 2020, her painting titled Our Hero Series 3 was shortlisted in a global painting competition that was open to every artist in the world under the theme United Against Corona organized by ICCR. In June 2020, she was in the World Generation Z article by AFP as a young Malaysian visual artist together with other creative individuals around the world for being creative and committed against the virus. This article received more than 200 media coverage worldwide in six continents of the world. On 2nd September 2020, her painting titled World Peace was selected as a header for World Peace Project 2020 Series 1, which was created by Kerry Bowers in USA in conjunction with World Peace Day on 21st September 2020. On 13th September 2020, her painting titled Our Hero Series 2 was selected for World Peace Project 2020 Series 3 in USA as well. In 2021, she was selected to be in the Gen T list by Tatler Asia. She is among the young leaders across the region of Asia, including Hong Kong, Singapore, Malaysia, Philippines, mainland China, Taiwan, Thailand, and Indonesia. Nationally, she was awarded as the weekly winner of a live painting competition called Nagaraku, organized by the National Art Gallery on 29th July 2017. On 28th July 2018, she won third place at the National Abilimpics Live Painting Competition. She was also appointed as a featured artist for Dana Jamin Mighty Run 2018, and it was a success. She was awarded as the National Autism Champion in conjunction with World Autism Awareness Day on 2nd April 2019. On 14th May 2020, she received a consolation prize from the National Arts Gallery in Kuala Lumpur for a live painting video on Portal Go Gallery. Her painting titled Unity in Diversity Series 3 adorned the Putrajaya sculpture at Putra Square for the country's Independence Day celebration in 2019. It received numerous media coverage worldwide.
This sculpture won the President's Special Recognition Award under MIP My Place Award 2019, Excellence in Placemaking. She was also appointed as a featured artist by Angkasa in collaboration with the Faculty of Art and Design in UITM Kedah for a 6 feet by 20 feet mural painted at Genius Kurnia in Kuala Lumpur as a tribute to Malaysia's 62nd Independence Day in 2019. In 2020, she received an incentive award from Shah Alam Gallery in Shah Alam Selangor for her painting titled Embracing Coronavirus Series 1. The award ceremony was on 23rd March 2021. In 2021, she won first place in a painting competition titled This is Pahang, organized by the University College of Yayasan Pahang in collaboration with Tourism Pahang Malaysia and Majlis Pemulihan Malaysia. Jamila has also participated in numerous exhibitions. Her art career started with a very humble beginning by opening a booth in several bazaars and mini solo exhibitions to obtain feedback from the public in 2017. These were booths at TM Convention Center and Wanutama. And this was an exhibition at the Museum and Art Gallery at Bank Negara, Malaysia. This was her mini solo exhibition at Concord Hotel in Shah Alam, which was officiated by His Royal Highness, Tengku Amir Shah, the Crown Prince of Selangor. From 2018 onwards, she participated in numerous exhibitions at national and international levels together with other well-known professional artists created by professional curators from mainstream galleries. This was the International Group Art Exhibition Imango Mundi, with 600 artists from Asian countries Malaysia, Singapore and Indonesia in 2018. During the exhibition, she obtained media coverage by MHI TV3, a documentary regarding her art. From 2019 onwards, Art Jamila received invitations from prestigious mainstream galleries to join other professional artists in group exhibitions curated by professional curators. The selected shows were Ingenious Soul at Gallery Prima NSTP in January 2019 at the national level, Expressi Malindo at Shah Alam Gallery in July 2019 at an international level, RACS Art 2019 at KL City Gallery in December 2019 at a national level, Sekaki International Art Show in September 2020 at KL City Gallery, Traversing 175 at Gallery Prima NSTP in October 2020 at an international level, and Pamiran Terbuka 2020 at Shah Alam Gallery. Finally, on 15 December 2020, Art Jamila was very honoured to be invited as a special guest artist in an international virtual art exhibition comprised of 93 artists from 9 countries. This event was organized by the Asia International Community of Art and Design in collaboration with Al Biruni Gallery, Faculty of Art and Design here at the Ampera and Multimedia University. In 2021, she was selected to exhibit in Home Art Open Online Exhibition organized by Home Art Trans. She has obtained numerous merits as a featured artist and recognition from various platforms. Her stories have also appeared in numerous newspaper media coverage worldwide as well as numerous social news sites where she gained worldwide media coverage and on social media. Her art and story have also been covered in magazines from all over the world. Interview sessions and documentaries about her work have also been broadcasted on television and on YouTube. She was also called for live interviews at various radio stations. She managed to break many barriers at a very young age and her unique biography creates history to inspire others for the next generations. Art Jamila has made an impact to various industries such as Art Industries, Sustainability Industry, Social Entrepreneurship Industry, Education Industry, Media Communication Industry, Music Industry and Fashion Industry. She has also contributed to the Philanthropy and Charity Industry by holding sharing sessions with the autism community and the art industry. She has also contributed monetary gifts by holding collaborations and giving direct monetary donations. Everyone in this world has different challenges to face. Some have a harder time facing it and some face it head on. We are all people, as well as those in the neurodivergent community, such as people with autism. People in this community are unique individuals each with their own neurological conditions. Autism is not a disease, but a condition. 
People with autism range from three levels on the spectrum, level 1 being the highest functional known as Asperger's syndrome. People in level 2 only partake in conversations or specific topics that interest them and usually speak in short sentences, while level 3 is severe autism where the individual requires very substantial support. Some people with autism are born with extraordinary gifts and unique abilities in specific fields that interest them, such as in art, mathematics and many more. These people are known as autistic savants. They can either be in level 1, 2 or 3. Albert Einstein is a planet scientist who discovered the theory of relativity. Mary Temple Grandin is an animal empath. She has the ability to communicate with animals through her mind. Lawrence Kim Peek is a speed reader. He has the ability to memorize detailed data in books he reads. Leslie Lemke is a magical musician. He has the ability to play piano perfectly after hearing the music once. Alonso Clemens is an incredible sculptor. He has the ability to create sculptures from memory. Stephen Wiltshire is a human camera. He has the ability to draw the entire cityscape of New York City from memory. Juan Jamila, also known as R. Jamila, has the ability to draw emotions and historical events through her memories. Starting from using art to communicate, she is now a visual artist that documents history into her paintings. One doesn't have to be perfect to achieve big dreams. Thank you so much for the video. And from the video just now, we can see that Sister Arjunila achieved many achievements and is so famous. From there, I was curious about her for the first time before she had success like today. So, Panshima, can you tell us uh, when Arjunila started uh, her interest in art and what influenced her? Um, okay. Um, Arjunila actually, um, she started doing sketches at the age of four um, as a tool of communication because uh, she didn't have any verbal uh, at that time. Um, and even uh, when she started to speak and talk uh, at the age of 10, she continued uh, doing her sketches uh, instead of just telling emotions, but she also started to draw her experience, events that happen at school, at home, um, you know, she still continue because she can communicate much better with drawings rather than um, verbal. And uh, when Shima can, like, I really want to know, like, how did you feel when you found out your daughter has such great uh, talent in art? What is so unique about her art to uh, attract the work to it? Um, your question is, how do I feel? Okay, um, well, I feel relieved that she has uh, an ability. Um, uh, but uh, of course, during that time, the ability is for sketching, which, which really helped me uh, to communicate with her. And, and now um, she's using that ability as her profession. So I'm very happy with it now. So, Sister Jamila, artistic prowess is recognized not just locally but internationally. Uh, does it make our Jamila feel pressure or overwhelmed about it? Uh, can you say that again? Because I'm not so clear. Um, Sister Jamila's artistic prowess uh, is recognized not only locally but also internationally. Does it make uh, does it make uh, our Jamila feel pressure or overwhelmed about it? Um, well, uh, she's not pressured about it. It's just that she, her schedule is so tight that sometimes she's tired about it and need a break. Um, uh, like currently, we just had a very tight schedule due to the um, uh, international OKUD, right? Um, so, um, yeah, she's not pressured, but it's just that meeting deadlines and that will pressure her, yeah. yeah. So, um, how was Jamila before compared to now? Yeah. Okay. No, Jamila, now she...
Uh, sorry, Poshima. I think uh, there is some um, uh, internet problem. I we cannot hear your voice. In your screen, it's just stop right there. Yes. Oh, we cannot hear you. Can you turn on the okay, mic? Okay. okay, okay. Now I change to my handphone. Can you okay. hear me now? Yes, yes, yes. I can hear you very clearly. All right. Okay, okay. Well, what's the question? Um, how was uh, Jenny left before compared to now? Well, uh, before she was like... Um, uh, in summary, she was at le lower lower level two because there's level one, two, three, right? In autistic, and uh, level one is the most uh, uh, functioning, and level three is the least. Okay, she was in the lower level two before, but now I think she's in level one because she can strategize, she can manage her own time, she can do cooking, she can do a lot of things. Okay. Thank you, Porshima. I think I am, this one is the last question about uh, Jamila. Uh, do you have any uh, future plans to have her art flowers? Um, well, um, she since she is already uh, known, uh, so what I plan to do is um, next year I will have a proper setup of uh, art gallery for her. Um, and, um, and then she will can she can have her own uh, event and, and you know it's like an art museum something like that so um, then she will move you know better while well, having her own physical uh, proper gallery setup because currently our gallery is uh, a home setup. Thank okay, thank you so much, uh, Shima, for answering the question. We will continue with the next session for today's interview, which is a modest story of love, care, and process. And uh, according to some research, especially of Ahsan and Dimas on 2020, uh, shock, confused, and such are the common reaction of parents' experience when they have a disability try. So, uh, can you share with us about the first time you realized that your daughter was the first diagnosed at a servant with autism? How did you feel at that time? Uh, well, um, I feel uh, confused, um, not knowing what is autistic at that time. Uh, that was the first time that I heard the, the, the terminology of autistic. I don't know how to handle and uh, so what i did was i just have to follow the advice from the early intervention center and it's very tiring and very disappointing because it's not easy to i don't see progress you know um um, but i i just have to continue and and, and do what i need to do um uh, um yeah like that. <laughs> um, I see. So, uh, also according to Asan and Dimas on 2020, the ability of parents to get out of inner stress and the ability to find the solutions is called the coping mechanisms. So, parents may be in the dark about how to raise uh, their child with a disability at first. So, can you please share with us your experience coping uh, mechanism when taking care of her? Um. Well, uh, 
My mechanism is like uh, I follow the advice from the early intervention center, but I send her to a normal school, uh, starting from uh, kindergarten uh, up to primary school. Uh, she, I put her into a normal school because I want her to normalize, and um, it was good because uh, she you know, actually. Uh, improve a lot but uh, of course um, after accepting uh, her situation as an autistic I started to learn about it and I I, I, I have to personally uh, teach her uh, in terms of academic because I cannot expect the teachers at the school um, to know how to handle her and uh, my purpose of sending her to, to the normal school is just to um, socialize and uh, participate with all the school curriculum and um, I was lucky because I get a very good school that uh, the uh, the the head of the school and also the teachers understand and they cooperate with me uh, to let her participate with the activities at school and I will support in terms of academic and what I did was every day I will follow uh, all the school school um, homeworks and and I will like help Jamila uh, with her homework and I end up uh, preparing a lecture note for her um, like the way I teach the um, at the, the, the university student and I, I I teach her that way, uh, but of, of course I have to read all the primary school curriculum and, and digest it and and prepare the lecture suitable for her the way she can understand it. Yeah, thank you so much, Ponshima. Uh, as I know, like for those with disability, it can be very difficult for them to be included in society as well as also difficult for our parents to have them to include it in society. So how did you get your daughter to be included in society in the first time? Um, okay. First, it was by force where I forced to put her into a normal school. And when she finished her UPSR, uh, she, she started her career um, as an artist. Uh, but of, of course, it is difficult at first because she is autistic. Um, she she joined a lot of autistic events, but slowly when she started to win awards and people started to recognize her unique uh, art, and she started to be acceptable and she started to get invitation to join the normal, um, you know, artist um, exhibits, and and they understand her weakness that is a verbal uh, and and she st she can speak now but she can only have limited uh, um, ability uh, just to explain about her art okay like um, like she cannot like answer difficult question uh, that is like not her the the normal question given to her and that but she's acceptable in, in there's you know even the national art gallery accepted her and gallery Shah Alam and 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 some of the galleries in the you know the private galleries also is uh, accepting her putting her together with the other normal artists it's like you, you need to start to achieve something you need to have your own unique uh, um, uh, you, you have to be unique in order to be accepted you know uh, to be recognized uh, into the society Mm, okay, uh, so what was the process like in developing her into an artist well-known locally and internationally? Would you share with us your invaluable experience? Well, she started with, you know, being an autistic, sometimes people ask, or probably the mother, because the mother is an architect that do the painting, but... So in order for me to prove that it is her own, I do a lot of videos on how she paint, okay, and then I put it in, on YouTube. Then after that, uh, she started to do a lot of live painting uh, demonstration. And then she started to join in a live painting competition. So when she won a, a few competitions that is live 
doing live um, uh, in the competition. And um, um, and then she started to win, you know, winning more competition from national level to international level, and 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 that's how she progressed. And uh, media started to pick pick up, you know, her success, and 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 you know, it goes on like that. Mm. It's really interesting. And then from the video, like um, Arjamila is not only a talented person, but also a very influential uh, person in inspiring and motivating everyone with disability in society. Uh, do you have any advice for persons with disability and how they could nurture their own talents and help them to contribute and fit in into society? Okay. Uh, um, in terms of Jamila, she... Uh, her painting is more about uh, she do a lot of a lot of um, awareness in her paintings like sea pollution awareness um, uh, um, like she paints uh, the current issues you know like climate change covid-19 pandemic so because of uh, whatever she paints is based on on what she go through um, daily activities and you know like like currently we are in the pandemic, so she will pin all the different uh, phases of pandemic, uh, from from the outbreak to the vaccination to the digital world. So um, it, now people started to pick up her art due to the uniqueness and the the message that she she tried to deliver. And and regarding um, climate change and also uh, sea pollution, um, she actually paint how the fishes and um, the, all the marine life are not happy in the sea when there is a pollution. So because of that, uh, she was appointed as the impact artist by the Atlanta Foundation in Switzerland. And so therefore, my advice is in order for you to be uh, acknowledged, you need to be, you need to be, you need to have a, you know, unique and different and you need to, uh, you know, give a valuable message. So, like, we need to be ourselves and be different. Right? Yes. For everyone to, like, know that what are we trying to say to everyone. Yeah, like, so, like you deliver messages, you deliver yeah. awareness like that, yeah. I see what I see. And thank you so much again, Punshima, for answering the question. And I think this one is the last question for today's interview. This is like, do you have any advice for parents who have children with disability? Well, you need to embrace the situation. And I know it's not easy, but uh, you just don't have any other choice. Embrace it, explore their inborn uh, talent, develop uh, their special isolated skill, and and develop all the positive features because uh, like autism, they have a lot of positive features, especially their memory. They have a very strong memory. Their strength is there, and and, and they are very process oriented. Uh, so therefore, you have to tackle them based on their strength. Don't um, standardize. For instance, when I teach Jamila, I teach based on uh, how she learn best not on the standard way of learning. Okay, thank you so much for sharing with us. It's such an honor to have you here uh, with us today. Thank you for uh, saving your precious time to answering our questions. So um, now is a Q&A question, Q&A sections. If you guys have any questions for us to answer, you guys just uh, comment in the chat box or you guys can turn on your mic to let us know what is your questions is. You may start now. Uh, I think this, if no 
question actually i do have a question uh, to be honest like my nephews like now it's already like seven years old but like i think he's also got autism because he cannot speak but he like understand what the uh, my sister say but like you know like see he, he cannot speak he tried to speak but like some voice or uh it's like not not make us like understand and the voice like in the video because like, i think like in the first some uh two years old he on always like look at the video in youtube and i think it's really affect uh him uh, until now like almost like seven years old and he still cannot speak so uh i really want to like do you have any advice for me uh, as well as my sister like how to have her uh how to have him like uh like and not like uh speak influence but like it's like better than before um okay i let me share my experience with jamila one day we we had a, a kitten at home and and one day the kitten jumped into a vase it's a big vase and uh, with a small uh opening uh, and on the at the top so when the kitten jumped into it and the kitten couldn't get out right and she was like uh she don't know how to you know to help the kitten so she she said she suddenly scream and say mommy so that's her first word mm. yeah because it is out of a situation where she is forced to say because it was emergency uh and then i went to her i was so surprised that, that i hear some a voice from her and and she showed me the vase and and i and i, I look in at the vase and i saw oh there's a kitten in there so that's the first word only one word and then when and I, i started to like talk and talk to her you know and ask her to see more things so she de- she developed from there so i see a uh, questions in the tag box um the questions is has sister arjamila's life changed significantly compared to before yes a lot mm-hmm. previously she 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 she's a very sad person because she cannot like speak and communicate um uh, even though she do a lot of sketches but it's not that easy for everyone to understand um and uh, uh so i uh when she can speak now she can understand she can like 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 tell what she wants to do let's go out you know um mommy i i'm tired i want to watch tv you know she can she can speak so Yeah, her life changed significantly, and she is like a a star <laughs> at the moment because uh, a lot of people want to interview her, and she have a lot of events, things like that. Okay, thank you so much for the, your answer. So, there's uh, another questions, and um, so um. She said that can you share with us about the difficulties or challenge of being a model of a child with disability? Oh my goodness, it is so difficult. You need to have a lot of patience and and uh it's not easy. I tell you it is not easy, but uh, just don't compare with people who do not have any um disabled child because if you start to compare and you start to be depressed it's not easy because uh, previously you know she have a lot of problem like she needs to go to the toilet very often so when we i take her out uh, to a shopping complex or for a holiday i need to like make sure we always need to visit the toilet very often when it's very tiring uh, i mean it's very tiring actually to have a disability child very very tiring emotionally physically is everything uh but of course uh, now when she already have a, a profession and she can handle it well um well it's a relief but the the memory and the experience that i went through is like uh, going through a giant roller coaster 
Thank you so much, Bon. Uh, Shima, I think this one is uh, very close to the Q&A session. And Alhamdulillah, it is our pleasure to can invite you to today interviews. Thank you so much again, Bon Shima, uh, for answering our question, as well as like spending your time to support our interview today. We are really grateful and uh, appreciate about that. We said that we are sorry if there are any inconvenience occur during the interview. And through this interview, I hope Sister Jamila will achieve more and more achievement in the future also. And thank you so much, uh, our audience today also. Thank you uh, very much, Guy, for attending our interview today. I uh, apologize once again if there, is, if there is like any inconvenience or problem during the interview. Okay, besides that, if you have, if you guys have any questions or any inquiries, please, please don't hesitate to contact to through our uh, email, which is we have attached in our viral message. And thank you, everyone. Don't forget to take care of yourself during this pandemic. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice day. Yeah, you too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.